So we've seen that the group of three vectors x, y, and x, y is linearly dependent because x, y can be expressed as a linear combination of x and y. And it should be pretty obvious that if we ever have a group of three vectors and two of them are x and y, then that group is going to be linearly dependent because the third vector can always be expressed as a linear combination of x and y because x and y span the plane. So the interesting question is, is, is it true that any time we have a group of three vectors that they are going to be linearly dependent? And the answer turns out to be yes. So let's say we have three arbitrary vectors in the plane. We'll call them A, B, and C. And because they're in the plane, each one of them can be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors x and y. And we're going to try to show that the vector c, in addition to being able to be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors x and y, can also be expressed as a linear combination of the vectors a and b. And if we can do this, then we've shown that these three vectors are linearly dependent because one of them, C, can be expressed as a linear combination of the other two, A and B. So this is actually pretty easy to do. We already know that C can be expressed as a linear combination of X and Y. And it turns out that a linear combination of the vectors A and B is a linear combination of the vectors X and Y. So let's look at a general linear combination of the vectors a and b. Say the coefficient in front of a is the number a, and the coefficient in front of b is the number b. Now, by substituting in for the vectors a and b, their expressions as a linear combination of the vectors x and y, we can see how to write this linear combination of a and b as one of x and y. So we find that the coefficient in front of the vector x is going to be a times a sub x plus b times b sub x. And the coefficient in front of the vector y is going to be a times a sub y plus b times b sub y. So we've just shown that a linear combination of the vectors a and b is actually a linear combination of the vectors x and y. So we've almost shown how to express the vector C as a linear combination of the vectors A and B. We know how to express C as a linear combination of X and Y, and we know how a linear combination of A and B transforms into a linear combination of X and Y. The only thing left to do is to figure out how to equate these two coefficients. So we know the coefficient on the vector X in the expansion of vector C in a linear combination of X and Y is C sub X. And we know that if we have a linear combination of A and B where the coefficients are the numbers A and B, then the corresponding coefficient on the vector X when we transform that into a linear combination of the vectors X and Y is going to be A times A sub X plus B times B sub X. So we wanna equate these to C sub X. And we do the same thing for C sub Y. So what we've just done is create a system of equations. We have two equations, this first one and the second one. And we have uh, two unknown variables that we get to choose, the coefficient a and the coefficient b. Now, if you've studied systems of equations before, you know this problem is solvable. We can solve the system for numbers a and b that satisfy these equations. And that solves the problem of expressing the vector C as a linear combination of the vectors A and B, which means these three vectors aren't linearly independent. The only caveat is if um, these numbers A sub X, B sub X, A sub Y, B sub Y have some weird condition where their ratios are equal to each other, that means that this system is unsolvable. But fortunately, if that happens, that also means that the vectors A and B are already linearly dependent. One is just a scalar multiple of the other, so we don't actually have to worry about that case. Now, this last argument hinged on the result about systems of equations. 
And so if you find that hard to swallow, there's another perhaps more clever way to show the same thing without using that result. So again, the goal is going to be to try to find a linear combination of A and B that's equal to C to show that these three vectors are linearly dependent. And what we're going to do this time is start with the vectors X and Y. And we know that these two vectors span the plane. So I wanna to try to replace one of them with a vector A. We know A can be expressed as a linear combination of X and Y. Let's say the coefficients are A sub X and A sub Y again. So we have the vector A equals A sub X times X plus A sub Y times Y. Now we can figure out what X is in terms of a by rearranging this. So we have a sub x times x equals a minus a sub y times y. And so long as a sub x is not equal to zero, we can divide by a sub x to find out what x is in terms of a. Now if a sub x is zero, then a is just a scalar multiple of y. And we can use the same argument that I'm going to present but instead of replacing x with the vector a, just pretend like we replaced y with the vector a. So we found out how to express x in terms of a and y. So if x and y span the plane, it must also be the case that a and y span the plane. Because any linear combination of x and y we have, we can just substitute in this expression with a and y, and that'll be a linear combination of a and y. So if x and y span the plane, so too do a and y. Now if a and y span the plane, then we can express b as a linear combination of a and y. And we're gonna repeat the same thing we just did. I want to replace y with b. So let's figure out how to express y in terms of b. So this is gonna look just like it did before. We have b sub y times y equals b minus b sub a times a. And dividing by b sub y, we get y equal to one over b sub y times the quantity b minus b sub a times a. So long as b sub y is not equal to zero. And note that if b sub y is equal to zero, our job has been made much easier because in this case, b is a scalar multiple of a. So we know a and b are linearly dependent, so there's no way that a, b, and c could be linearly independent. So now that we can express y in terms of b and a, anywhere we see a y in a linear combination of a and y, we can replace it with a linear combination of a and b. So since a and y span the plane, so too must a and b. So we've arrived at this conclusion that a and b, just like x and y, span the plane. But this means that the vector c can be expressed as a linear combination of these two vectors, which means that the three vectors a, b, and c are linearly dependent. So we've shown that it's impossible to have three or more vectors in the plane that are linearly independent. And this argument is pretty easy to generalize to higher dimensional spaces. So we can say that if you have a space that has a basis consisting of n vectors, any n plus one or more vectors in that space are going to be linearly dependent. And the argument looks exactly the same as the one I just gave. It's just a bit more tedious. So this means that it's impossible to have a basis with more than three vectors in the plane. Because if we had a basis with three vectors, well, we know those three vectors would be linearly dependent and hence not a basis. To be a basis, the vectors have to be linearly independent. And so the general version of this is if you have a basis of a vector space with n vectors, then any group of more than n vectors will be linearly dependent and hence not a basis. So you can't have a basis of that space that has more than n vectors if you have one with n vectors. Now, the reverse question is, is, is it possible for there to be a basis that has less than n vectors? And the answer is no, because we could run the same argument but with the smaller basis towards the larger basis. So 
if there were a basis that had less than n vectors, then that would show that our basis with n vectors is linearly dependent, and hence it wasn't a basis. So no, it's not possible to have a basis with less than n vectors if we have one consisting of n vectors. So the conclusion of these two facts that if we have a basis of n vectors, there can't be one consisting of more than n vectors, and there can't be one consisting of less than n vectors, means that all bases have exactly n vectors. So in general, all bases of a vector space have the same number of vectors. And this number is called the dimension of the space. And because of this result, this is an unambiguous number. There is one dimension because all bases of the space are going to have the same number of vectors in them.